now type this malitis clinical features so i want to describe clinical features separate type 1 clinical features and type 2 but as i already mentioned in previous video in a path physiology video there are already we already discover 3p okay this 3p in a, in a both case i in uh, type 1 patients also in a type 2 patients also 3p is what poly polyphagia polyuria and polydipsia okay this 3p is a common in a both but in a type 1 there is a dehydration you can see more dehydration in the patients and weight loss you can see in a weight loss dizziness dizziness even parasthesia also you can see parasthesia and maybe present ketoacidosis also but in a type 1 but in type 2 we will see the 3p plus noxuria noxuria okay and fatigue fatigue malaise malaise but most important here don't develop they never develop any ketoacidosis you need to remember these things but but maybe hyper osmolar coma could be there is a hyper osmolar coma so the in the clinical features is the same according to the path physio i already mentioned 3p the most you need to remember diabetes mellitus you please remember 3p polyphagia polyuria and polydipsia in a type 1 and type 2 i already mentioned type 1 is a mostly is onset is a juvenile in a child children's okay adolescence type 2 is a mostly in an adult in a obese peoples okay type 2 that's why there is a due dehydration weight loss we can see the weight loss dizziness paresthesia and most common is a ketoacidosis this is the progression of type 1 but where is type 2 there is a noxuria 3p plus noxuria fatigue malaise even though they are obese people but they are fatigue you know and malaise but they don't develop any ketoacidosis as well as but they can produce hyper or smaller coma okay these are the main clinical features for type 1 and type 2 so you can easily differentiate okay now in the next video we will discuss discuss about criteria how we diagnose this is a very very most common important okay okay now uh, for diagnosis purpose the criteria what are the criteria okay criteria for the diabetes mellitus but before criteria the blood glucose level blood glucose level normal okay normal in a fasting time in a fasting time normal is a 6.1 to 7.0 m mole per liter or or 110 to 126 mg per dl okay this is the normal blood glucose level in a fasting state okay in a fasting time this is the normal blood glucose level now in a criteria for diabetes mellitus what are the criteria the first criteria is of course symptoms i already mentioned you what are the symptoms symptoms plus random random plasma glucose plasma glucose is more than 11.1 a mole per liter a mole per liter or 200 mg per dl this is a random plasma glucose random plasma glucose means you need to remember what is random random means if patient came in your hospitals and if you take this blood samples at any time that is called as a random so if more than 11.1 m mole per liter or 200 mg per dl and same times it has if the person has symptoms so you need to suspect as a diabetes mellitus or second conditions <coughs> symptoms okay plus fasting fasting plasma glucose level if more than 7 m mole per liter or more than 126 mg per dl then also this is also second criteria or third criteria is a OGTT. 
what is OGTT? Oral <coughs> glucose, uh, oral glucose tolerance test. This OGTT, two hour plasma glucose, if more than eleven point one mmol per liter, <coughs> that means that two hundred mg per dl. Then also this is the criteria for the diabetes mellitus. So the main is a main are three. One is a symptoms plus random plasma glucose if more than 11.1 mol or 200 mg per dl. Second is a symptoms plus fasting plasma glucose more than 7 mol or more than 126 mg per dl. Or OGTT oral glucose tolerance test two hour plasma two hour plasma glucose if more than 11.1 mol per liter or 200 mg per dl. Nowadays. The another is a condition is a called HbA1c. This is a glycosylated hemoglobin. Nowadays, this is also measuring okay for the controlling diabetes mellitus or maybe it is also used for the diagnostic purpose also. If this one is a normal is a less than seven percent okay. If more than seven percent, there is also diabetes mellitus because why nowadays we are using this glycosylated hemoglobin because they have a they have a potential what is this it is a stable minor hemoglobin component that forms slowly from non enzymatic combination of hemoglobin plus glucose so as we know that rbc has a 120 days of life span that's why we can measure this hba1c Till 120 days. That's why it is a uh, nowadays is a very good uh, diagnostic purpose for uh, if we are giving treatment for the diabetes mellitus patients. So HbA1c glycosylated hemoglobin should be seven percent. Okay, if more than seven percent, so we need to remember there is a diabetes mellitus. So these are the criteria for the diabetes mellitus. Before finishing wrap up, I need to repeat again. I want to repeat. Normal blood glucose level is 6.1 to 7.0 mol per liter or 110-126 mg per dl. First conditions criteria symptom plus random plasma glucose level if more than 11.1 mol per liter or 200 mg per dl or symptoms plus fasting plasma glucose 7 mol per liter or 126 mg per dl or OGTT 2 hour plasma glucose more than 11.1 mol per liter or 200 mg per dl so this is the criteria for the diabetes mellitus so now in the next video we will discuss about the, its treatment